Well, hello, Calgary Flames fans. We finally have Flames hockey again, and we are going to talk all about that today, plus a Mark Giordano reunion. Thank you so much for tuning in to Locked On Flames. If you're new here, hello. My name's Jess, and I am obviously the host of this podcast, and you can find me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto, and if you're watching on YouTube, my Twitter handle is right there. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, a little bit about me is that I do public relations for the Metropolitan Riveters, and I'm also in charge of their fan comms, so newsletters, uh, fun behind-the-scenes things that uh, often don't <laughs> get proper recognition from <laughs> hockey fans. So uh, let's jump right into it. <laughs> Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, Flames fans, we have a postponed Battle of Alberta to look forward to that, you know, may end up playing a part in playoff pictures, and that is always something to get a little bit nervous about, but it's also something to get really excited about. The Flames look to assert themselves against the latest Pacific Division edition, the Seattle Kraken, uh, this Thursday, which is actually my birthday, so it's kind of fun to have that to look forward to. (laughs) They are traveling stateside, and this is their first game in 18 days. That is quite some time. I would imagine they're excited and a little anxious to get back out there on the ice and probably looking forward to being a healthy team. Uh, Daryl Sutter said, I think this, I think this just reinforces the detail parts of our games. It's not like it disappeared or they forgot about it. It's engraved in them. The big thing with us is that we are probably healthier, (laughs) healthier than we have been any time since the last exhibition game, quite honestly. And that's true. That is very true. Tyler Pitlick is back on the ice for the Flames, and he suffered a lower body injury, I think, like, in November or very early December, if I remember correctly. Chris Tanev, whose brother, Brandon, plays for Seattle, uh, had this to say. I think everyone's excited. You are off for so long in your house, and you're itching to get back out there. Obviously, everyone maybe didn't have their legs yesterday and skate, and but the excitement and fun factor sort of makes up for that. Everyone is excited to get back going and playing. So, you know, it's I think the players are more than ready to get back out there. They are excited. They are looking forward to playing a competitive game again, and it'll be nice to watch hockey again. I know that some games are happening tonight. Uh, I believe there are some Pacific Division games, so we can, you know, kind of see how things are going there and within our own division. But I think we have to remember that they have had a lot of time off, a lot of time for dust to collect and settle. And some of these players might be feeling a little bit run down. So we just have to give them just a little bit of wiggle room here. I don't know. We're going to talk about this more later on in the show, but I definitely think that we have to remember just how long 18 days is. These guys are, you know, the type of players who are up every day. They are with their routine. They are at the rink. They are at the practice facility exercising with their trainers, with this, with that. And they, a lot of them couldn't do that due to the outbreak. So uh, falling back into a routine after a long period of time, off is going to be difficult and I I really think that the only two players that avoided protocol were Matthew Kachuk and Blake Coleman so you know (laughs) it's great it's honestly it's fantastic that they got to uh you know somehow avoid the virus and stayed healthy but then you have to think about all the other players impacted and um and just because they were asymptomatic or mild symptoms doesn't mean that <laughs> their bodies like haven't been through it and been fighting a virus regardless. And I don't know about you, but when I'm sick, I am the biggest baby. And then trying to like regain my, 
uh, like my footing is always fun. And I am always, always uh, slow to start. So we'll have to see what, <laughs> what Thursday brings for the Flames, but we'll have more updates from practice between now and then. But uh, before we get too ahead of ourselves here and talk about uh, Flames Christmas past, uh, let's talk about Bet Online AG. Bet Online AG is your number one spot for online sports betting. They have everything from uh, baseball, football, college and professional, hockey, boxing, MMA. UFC down to your favorite Vegas casino games. So they're offering you, Locked on Flames listeners, a special promotion uh, for a 50% welcome bonus. And all you have to do is sign up today on their newly revamped website and make that uh, first deposit and earn a 50% welcome bonus when you use promo code Locked On. So all you have to do is use promo code locked on for that 50% welcome bonus at Bet Online AG. Locked on Flames continues. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. It has been quite a while since we have sat down and talked about the Flames struggles. And not because they've been winning left and right in the month of December, not because, you know, it's flown under the radar or or they've straightened themselves out. Quite the opposite. Things got so bad that they shut down. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, uh, the last game they played was a 4-2 loss to Boston. And this was not their best performance. Markstrom struggled tracking that puck. He, I don't know what happened. And then part of me, like having retrospect, like 2020 vision hindsight, like, 2020 was he was everyone who you know struggled like visibly struggled were they feeling under the weather because I'm pretty sure it was the next day all those positive tests came out and all those players entered protocol were was that virus stirring up in their in their system like days before like a cold or a sinus infection peaks for me anyways I know that, like, I feel sluggish, I feel run down, and no amount of coffee in the world can, like, get me out of that fog. So, maybe that's what it was for them. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to look at this in a <laughs> in a way that isn't too critical of them because they're human beings. Regardless if they were sick or not, I think that it's fair to look at them and say that wasn't a good game and they're regardless of what it was there was an unfortunate set of circumstances that made them play like trash it's that easy <laughs> they haven't had much luck against teams in their own division so it'll be interesting to see if they can bounce back I don't even want to use the term bounce back because they haven't played in 18 days they have had two practices they are coming off of an, an outbreak. They are, <laughs> they lost four straight just before this. And I'm sure that they're going to try their best, but you know what? It's kind of like the preseason when they went out there and they were like, kind of played like trash really bad. And we were like, Oh, here we go again. Another season of flames hockey. Uh, and they, they, they scared us a little bit. Uh, we might see that version. We might, and we just have to hold our breaths and compose ourselves and remind ourselves that, again, they have not played in 18 days. I feel like you're going to get so tired of hearing me say that, and I apologize in advance. But this, like, it's a serious thing. Like, this, it's the same way you look at the preseason. You have to remember that, there were extenuating circumstances surrounding the situation, why they had not played any long time and why they're, why they're trying to take right, wipe that dust off their shoulder and get back into the swing of things. This isn't just a, like it was an, it was an unexpected pause. Once again, like they, they knew that 
they had their winter break upcoming, but I don't think any of them anticipated testing positive or postponements of games or not being able to potentially make it home for the holidays. Like, there are some bigger issues here than just a 60-minute hockey game. So I, I hope that, you know, we aren't seeing too much regression because that would be quite unfortunate and something that they obviously have to work on as a team. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to sit here and overanalyze one game. I don't think anyone should. It's not fair to the team and it's, <laughs> it's not fair to yourself to do that because deep down, you know you know that 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 the flames that we're seeing on Thursday are more than likely not going to be the team that we saw before they lost four straight, okay? I, I'm just trying to be realistic here, okay? Because I know people are going to harp on this idea that they should they're healthy, they're coming off of rest, you know, Seattle has players in COVID protocol. Uh, so they should just like get over it and they just need to play better. And it's like, that's not how you analyze a hockey team. We are playing hockey in, an, yes, again, unprecedented times. And 18 days without a hockey game is, um, that's that's a long time, you guys. And I'm I'm hopeful that, you know, they kind of shake it off and get back into the swing of things faster and sooner rather than later because, the clock is ticking and uh, every point matters. And, you know, Vegas is, I, see, I think that this is, this is where I'm going to get a little aggravated. <laughs> Vegas was like one of the only teams that wasn't shut down. And they, because they were able to just kind of collect points along the way, they have jumped to first in the Pacific division. whoop de doo We all knew that was going to happen, but that's what happens when you're playing not very good teams. Teams that are completely ravaged by COVID and an AHL roster for the most part. And I just, I don't think it's fair to like analyze them and be like, oh, they're like this elite team again. Like they know who they are and blah, blah, blah. Like as far as I'm concerned, they just got lucky. They swooped up and grabbed those points like Mario collecting those coins and Sonic collecting coins and give it a week, a few days to a week in the Pacific division. We'll be back where all will be right in the world. And I, and I don't think, <laughs> and by that, I don't want you to think like, I think Vegas will be trash. I just don't think that they're going to be number one. I don't think that Anaheim is in a position to sustain that number two seed just like I didn't think the Flames were, uh, you know, going to be able to hold that number one seed, that number one spot, for the entire remainder of the season. So we'll just have to see. And, you know, I think that there, there's plenty to look forward to when it comes to this. I can't, it's not even the second half of the season because it, it it's not. <laughs> it's not. They've played like 30 games. But – this stretch of the season and it'll be very enlightening to see what teams are kind of exposed to oh, that's, really not, that's probably not the best word to use huh but what teams are going to be uh you know where what teams are we gonna see for who they are now you know what what are we gonna see so coming up next we will wrap up the show with uh you know a little introduction to the Kraken and Mark Giordano uh, reunion. But before we do that, we are going to talk about B -b 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 Built Bar. Built Bar is the delicious protein bar that uh, everyone needs in their life because if it were up to me, I would have given everyone them for Christmas in their stocking stuffers and we would have had hot chocolate um, or hot chocolate infused, <laughs> built bar <laughs> infused hot chocolate. Uh, they are absolutely delicious. They go great in protein shakes. They go great in smoothies and they make a great after dinner snack. So 
while you are uh, online shopping, using up those gift cards, make sure you head on over to built.com today to sign up. You're not going to sign up. You're going to grab yourself <laughs> some Built Bars at built.com and you're going to use promo code LOCKED15 for that 15% off. Welcome to a Built Bar uh, discount code. So that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your Built Bars. And that's all, that's all I can ask of you. <laughs> built bars are absolutely delicious so head on over again to built.com for uh to place your order and use promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off of your first order of built bars who are the kraken well they have one of the best jerseys in the league they are one of the only teams that can nail a white jersey and besides that uh, they're eighth in the Pacific. They are 10, <laughs> 10, 17, and three. That's bad. And uh, <laughs> they are currently also, they're also dealing with a COVID outbreak. But I believe at the time that I'm recording, they have three players out. So um, that's probably going to change. By the time Thursday rolls around, hopefully it'll be no players for everyone's, uh, obviously, like, health and safety reasons. But uh, I mentioned Brandon Tanov earlier in this episode, and he is out with an ACL injury. So that's quite unfortunate for the Kraken. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it kind of stinks for Brandon Tanov because, you know, uh, it's he's really finding himself in... Seattle and I'm sure his brother Chris wanted to you know play against him I think that would be fun it's like a fun narrative and a fun storyline to run with so it's unfortunate and I I'm really not sure what their goalie situation is either because I know they were having problems with that before the holiday break and it'll be interesting to see kind of where they go and what their uh, what the direction is for the remainder of the season. And, of course, this will be our our reunion with our former captain, Mark Giordano. And we were he was supposed to have his homecoming last week in, obviously, obviously in Calgary. But, unfortunately, uh, due to the outbreaks and everything, they postponed that game. Which, I mean, obviously makes the most sense. Uh, there's no reason to be hosting hockey games when there's, like, you know, viruses. But <laughs> according to Money Puck, he is playing well, and the team is playing better with him on the ice. I think it's so fun to play with some of the tools on Money Puck and see where certain players fall, and there's a defenseman-only tool. And it's, like, um, most penalty minutes or something or – you can measure penalty minutes and it's like a quadrant of like undisciplined, chirpy, uh, friendly. And I forget the bot the other bottom one, but <laughs> Geo is down at the bottom with uh, friendly. And it's just like, yeah, I, I certainly hope so. The guy's 38 years old and I would certainly hope by now he has learned to mind his business. Uh, he's still not taking a lot of penalties and he's not drawing or forcing a lot of penalties so it's certainly an interesting time to be uh you know kind of a, a kraken player I mean you know you're you're going to be seeing your former teammates and we kind of saw this with uh Vladar against the Bruins um the playbook the Bruins wrote the playbook for Vladar and he was able to crack it. Is Geo going to be able to crack the flames and to be able to read them like a book and send them, you know, send them packing back to Calgary with a fifth straight loss? And I don't know. It'll just be interesting to to see that. And I don't. I don't think that there's any like love loss between the team. Like, I don't think that it's like, bad blood. I don't think there's any bad blood between the two teams. 
um, or I, there hasn't been really any time for there to be bad blood, but, you know, I don't think that Gio is necessarily upset with the Flames. Um, and he did an interview with Salem, and he understands that it's part of the business, and he understands why Seattle picked him. But at the end of the day, it's also just kind of like, damn, I spent my whole career there, and, you know, they just sent me packing but the price was too high to keep him and I think that the Flames defensive core is doing pretty well without him uh you know in my honest opinion I think that he was slowing the team down a bit I don't think that he was as effective as he could have been in Calgary but then again uh we have to remember that last year they played it they played in front of no fans last year was that last year? Yeah. <laughs> Again, this feels like a million years spread out, but, you know, they didn't play in front of fans last year. They're, they were playing the same five, six teams, eight, nine, ten times. And um, I don't know. You just have to, like, weigh in all the factors. And was Rasmus Anderson really a good partner for him last year? And, you know, you, you, you dissect everything and you start to think, oh, maybe it wasn't just a GL problem. But that is all I have for you today. And the Flames will reunite with Geo Thursday night in Seattle at 8 p.m. Mountain Time at the Climate Pledge Arena. And I uh, look forward to watching that game. It'll hopefully be a nice birthday present. And hopefully the Flames will uh, <laughs> gift me a dub for my 26th birthday. So thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked on Flames. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and it has been a pleasure chatting with you all. Bye-bye.